It's a breathless rush, a joyously careening ride of upset and wonder. Fitting then that from the unknown, the unexpected, comes Cinderella. And the proven pedigree, no stranger to the dizzying world that is the champion's ball. The Wildcats of Kentucky. The Utes of Utah. Two teams, one national champion. CBS Sports presentation of Prelude to a Championship is sponsored by Honda. Drive the high-performance Prelude and get lucky. Texas, where everything is big, including the dreams. And tonight, under the roof of San Antonio's Alamo Dome, either Utah or Kentucky will realize college basketball's biggest dream, the national championship. Here inside the dome, the colors are Utah red and Kentucky blue, accompanied by the sounds of college basketball, the brass and drums, the cheers and fight songs, an electric atmosphere filled with anticipation. The Utes are the new kids in town, and they stampeded into tonight's game by rolling over two number one seeds, defending national champion Arizona and perennial power North Carolina. The Kentucky Wildcats are old hands at this. They're making their third straight appearance in the championship game, having knocked off Duke, a number one seed, and Stanford along the trail. Good evening, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to Prelude to a Championship. In tonight's title game, Utah seeks its first national championship since 1944. And if the Utes win tonight, they will have defeated in succession the two winningest programs in college basketball history, Kentucky and North Carolina. Meanwhile, no team has won more NCAA tournament games than the Wildcats, who own six national championships. Tip time is 9.18 Eastern time, and the winners will put this trophy into their saddlebags and head off into the sunset. Set. I'm joined once again by the usual suspects, Clark Kellogg and Coach Dean Smith. And Coach, you know, this whole thing that happens, rebounding and defense, the hallmarks of these two teams, what about a matchup we can look forward to tonight? I really think the matchup, key matchup, is inside. Nazi Muhammad with Kentucky is very skilled, and he can score, and I know Tubby will try to get him the ball very much uh, every chance. Then on the other side of the ledger, Michael Dolia, a tremendous, strong 6'11", fifth-year senior who can score inside, and he really is strong. And then, of course, he can shoot outside as well. All right, now, for the Utah Utes, Clark, there has been a young man by the name of Andre Miller who has been an absolutely outstanding and magnetic performer in the Final Four. He truly has. Has. In him, Utah has a relentless rack-to-rack -rack guy. In open space, he is lethal. He's also garnered 28 rebounds in his last two outings. When he he's given the opportunity, Greg, in the open court, he could be lethal and he could be the difference. All right, Clark. We want to update you on a story that broke following Saturday's Utah North Carolina National Semifinal. The Tar Heels' Maktar Jai had accused Utah's Britton Johnson of directing a racial slur at him during that game. But today, Jai said it didn't happen and sent a letter apologizing to Johnson for making that accusation and wishing Utah well in tonight's game. A Utah spokesman said that Johnson has not seen that letter, but that the university and Johnson consider the matter over. When we come back, we will hear from the two coaches, Utah's Rick Majerus, Kentucky's Tubby Smith, as prelude to a championship continues. That is the Alamo here in San Antonio, site of a pivotal battle for Texas independence, now an enduring symbol of the anything is possible Texas pride. But there's no one here, there tonight because they're all in here as we welcome you back to Prelude to a Championship. For the two head coaches, tonight's game represents the pinnacle of a career. Each is appearing in his first national championship game. They arrived here a short while ago and spoke with us, beginning with Utah head coach Rick Majerus, who talked with Armin Katayan. 
Rick, the name of the game for your team is defense. Will you mix in any surprises tonight with the basic hard-nosed man-to-man? No, not really. We, we're basically a man-to-man -man team, and you guys have given this triangle and two a life of its own. Uh, we might play it for a possession or two, but, you know, if we're going to win this game tonight, we've got to get back in transition, get a hand up on the shots, block out, because that's what got us here. This is possibly the biggest pregame speech of your life and also the biggest game of your life. What do you tell the kids in the locker room? I'm trying to approach it just as I would if we were playing anyone within our conference or even preseason. I don't want to vary it any differently. I, it's the next game on the schedule, and that's what's gotten us here. I've always been a next game guy, or the game at hand, rather. And I think that you know, our kids realize where we're at, and I do too. But I don't want to put any undue pressure on them. And I don't think that there's a lot of pressure on you anyway when you defend and rebound. Thanks, Coach. Thank you very much. Now over to you, Michelle. Coach, your team has a chance to win its second national championship in three years tonight. What is the mood? What is the rallying cry of this team? Well, I think this team has always been a team of, uh, of destiny. I think they feel like, um, feel like, have felt like underdogs. And it's been a long year for them as far as the changes, you know, knowing that they have been here for the last two years and now a third year, especially for our seniors. I'm so happy for them that they were able to get back here and have another shot at a, at a championship. Utah's defense has been so effective in this tournament. How will Kentucky counter it? Well, we're going to hopefully use that against them by trying to get some back doors, some easy buckets. I think um, reading their, their switches, they do a lot of helping, so hopefully we can, um, we can get some back cuts on them and get some easy buckets. Coach, good luck. Thank you. Rick Majerus and Tubby Smith and prelude to a championship will continue in just a moment. They are getting set down on the floor to tip off the grand finale of what has been a very special march to this championship game. Here to call it for us, Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Gentlemen. Thank you. Special indeed, Greg. I'm glad you got your mind, Billy. Yeah, Great I, to I, be I, with you again. <laughs> We've got Kentucky playing in the championship game for the third straight year. Utah, meanwhile, hasn't been in this position since 1944. Well, recent memories for these guys, but they're grandfathers that don't remember 1944. Look at Utah's road out of the West, the three seed. They beat a couple of one seeds, in fact, Arizona, then Carolina in the Final Four. Meanwhile, Kentucky out of the South, they were positioned as the two seed behind Duke. First, they beat UCLA, then the Blue Devils in the regional final, and then the overtime thriller against Stanford. There are some philosophical differences between these two. Billy, tell us what separates them. You'd really have to agree. Kentucky he loves to press and when they do Utah likes to do what Stanford did and that is go over the top of the press and then look to attack with the outside jump shot. Utah is the best rebounding team in the country not by skying by blocking out and getting the rebound. Defensive tenacity on the part of Utah is amazing. Here's Andre Miller against Ed Cota. Look at the crossover dribble and there's the turnover. Kentucky is a team blessed with one of the most versatile players in all of college basketball. Padgett can go inside and he can go outside with that patented jump shot. One of the things you worry about is your point guard that's not making good free throws. The missing point. Wayne Turner's only shooting 57%. But one thing Kentucky is doing is blocking shots. They set an all-time NCAA tournament record with 42 blocks. Led by Muhammad and McGlure and... Well, the key could be Jeff Shepard. He comes off a career-high 27 against Stanford. This will be his final game in a Wildcat uniform, Billy. Here's the patented play to get him open. You see Turner going to the side. Evans cuts through. A double screen is set. And here comes Shepard out over the double screen for the curl jump shot, a key shot in the ball game that brought him to the championship. We'll see the play right here. Cutting through is Evans. Here you see the double screen taking place. And watch him turn that inside leg to square up to the basket with that patented jump shot. Utah and Kentucky for the national championship. Lineups and game time in just a moment. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA national championship game is sponsored by Oldsmobile. Microsoft, Pennzoil, Pizza Hut, and by Bud Light. March Madness. What a month we've had, and it all comes to a grand conclusion tonight. Kentucky in its third straight title game, and when you do that, you join some pretty select company, including Duke at the start of this decade. 
UCLA span a quarter century ago. Well, for the final time as the public address announcer at the Final Four, the legendary voice of the Southwest, Frank Fallon, with the lineup. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Alamo Dome in San Antonio for tonight's national championship game between the youths of the University of Utah and the Wildcats of the University of Kentucky. Now, let's meet the starting lineup. At forward for Utah, a 6'10 sophomore from Helsinki, Finland, number 13, Hanno Metala. At forward for Kentucky, a 6'5 senior from Miami, Florida, number 3, Alan Edwards. At forward for Utah, a 6'7 sophomore from Centerville, Utah, number 50, Alex Jensen. At forward for Kentucky, a 6'9 junior from Louisville, Kentucky, number 34, Scott Padgett. At center for Utah, a 6'11 senior from Portland, Oregon, number 51, Michael Goliath. At center for Kentucky, a 6'10 junior from Chicago, Illinois, number 13, Nazi Mohammed. At guard for Utah, a 6'2 junior from Los Angeles, California, number 24, Andre Miller. At guard for Kentucky, a 6'2 junior from Boston, Massachusetts, number 5, Wayne Turner. At guard for Utah, 6'5", senior from Tulela, Utah, number 34, Drew Henson. At guard for Kentucky, a 6'3", senior from Peachtree City, Georgia, number 15, Jeff Shepard. And introducing the head coaches for Utah in his 14th year, Rick Majerus. For Kentucky in his 7th year, Tubby Smith. Tubby Smith, hired last May the 12th. Billy, let's go through the Packer pointers for the championship game. All right, Jimmy, these teams do have some contrast, but here's some keys. Block out and board. The number one rebounding team in the country is Utah. Kentucky actually has a negative rebounding situation in the tournament, 1.8. So advantage Utah going in. Point counterpoint, two great point guards. Wayne Turner, 31 minutes, 29 assists, nine turnovers, 10 points a game. And of course, for Miller, 16.78 rebounds, 7.5 assists in 36 minutes. A real key matchup right there. And of course, inside, you have Michael Doliak, 30 minutes a game, 16 points a game, going up against Nazi Mohammed and Jamal McGuire. They average 17.2 and 11.7 together. Who's going to control the paint? And the unknown soldier, Jim, we've seen so many times lately a guy step up, Toby Bailey. Ron Mercer, can it be a Cameron Mills or an Evans or a Britton Johnson tonight? The unknown soldier could prove to be the key guy. These two, Jim Burr working his fourth championship game. Gray and Sanzir, their first. Kentucky in the white. Utah red. What a tournament we've had, and it all concludes here tonight at the Alamo Dome with Kentucky controlling the tip. And there's that point counterpoint matchup. Turner and Miller, keep your eye on that one who's done such a great defensive job on anybody he's covered this year on Shepard. That's a key matchup defensively. Muhammad with Medela on his back. Muhammad with the left hand, and he continues the pace that just had him blazing in the second half against Stanford, where he scored 17. Jim, time and again, we see both Goliak and Nazi Muhammad post up in the lane about three feet from the rim. You've got to push him out two or three steps beyond that to stop him. Now we see Goliak getting the same kind of position. Double up Goliak, but he still scores. Jim, the key is the defense, not the offense there. Both centers have got to push their man out farther from the basket than that. That's a simple put-up. 
Kick out, Edwards, three. Rattles out, Metala pulls it down. And there's that block out that I talked about. Block out and board. Utah does it better than anybody in college basketball. A turnover. Here comes Turner. Three on three. Miller cuts off his path. Defensive statistics by both of these teams in the tournament have been awesome. Utah holding people to 38%, Kentucky to 36%. So it doesn't seem like we're going to have a high-scoring game. Hatchet gets away for the lay-in. Good reverse dribble. A Utah team that held Arizona, the defending champs, 40 points below its average. It's allowed only 70 points twice this season by the opponent. Medela passes up the three, steps in over Padgett to tie it back at four. Need a lot more scoring and better offensive shots than I expected. Jim for 10 minutes, much less for just a minute and a half. Edwards. Muhammad gets away, tips it up. Good, good job by Nazi Muhammad. But Hansen on the floor. Calling for a timeout? No. No. That's a tie-up situation. The arrow belongs to Utah. Jim, I'm going to go back to the Duke game. A lot of coaches do not like to see you call a timeout just to save a possession, certainly not early in the game. Utah in the first half, allowing only 25 points a game in this tournament and leading by an average of nine points at halftime during the March stretch. Just getting organized there as to the arrow. Arrow favored Utah, so consequently in that held ball situation, Utah takes possession. And this allows Kentucky to set up their vaulted press. Notice how Utah is using a big man to come back and catch the inbounds pass, freeing up Miller. Get two seconds to get it across. Okay. Miller penetrates. Steal from behind by... Pushes Wait, it up. Right under the arms of Shepard. Miller with two early turnovers, Jim. Shepard driving. Beautiful move by Jeff Shepard. Great recognition by Shepard. He realizes they're playing him to shoot the jump shot, so he comes out on that curl move that he uses, pump fakes, and puts the ball on the floor. Metalik gets a screen from Jensen. Doesn't take the three, though. He has the bounce pass in, but the Doliak doesn't take advantage of it. Miller posting up Edwards. Loses control of it Three for a third turnover. time. The triple double man has triple, but in the wrong area for Richard Jarris with three turnovers. Hatchet too strong on the three. Medela, he loses to Shepard, stripped it away. This is not the efficiency that Rick Majerus likes to see. He likes to play half court at a time. This team is normally very efficient. Muhammad. Gets free for his second basket. Rick Majerus can't let his team go much longer without getting a little bit better offensive sets in half court. This is not Utah's basketball game. Goliath. Very quick possession. Yeah, Rick Majerus is going to have to call a time here. I know he doesn't want to, but he's got to get his team back into Utah basketball. Kentucky doing just what they want. We're nearing the 16-minute mark. First whistle under it. The timeout, Muhammad, not this time, but Shepard tips it out to keep it alive for Kentucky. Shepard at 6'5", tremendous leaping ability. Normally, it's Andre Miller who's the rebounding guard, but Shepard can do it as well. Shepard's jumper, had a foot on the line, would have been a two. Miller, nice spin away. Two. Now, that's coast-to-coast -coast against a tremendous one-on-one -on -one ball a, a defender against a ball handler. He took Turner. That's a palm. Absolutely. A ragged start for the Utes, but they only trail eight to six. Four turnovers by Utah in the first eight possessions. point of emphasis this year is on palming the ball. Now watch what happens to Wayne Turner. The reason I'm showing this, it could be a key in the game. Both of these guards love to use that maneuver. See how he's carrying the ball and freezing the defense? The officials in this particular game not going to let it get by. A major call for people to look for later in the game. 
That was the first Kentucky turnover in over 18 minutes of action dating back to the second half against Stanford. So a message sent to Turner. I'm sure Miller took note also. Absolutely. Both of these guards like to employ that particular technique. It's impossible to defend. Big changes in the Utah lineup. Jordy McTavish is in, handling the ball now. McLaurin in, you're going to see that. Two guys in the post for Kentucky. One primarily Doliak for Utah. Britton Johnson, 31, now with the ball. His first play. And now David Jackson, the third sub for the Utes. This unit being a little bit more patient with the ball. Nice feed. Doliak dumps it over McGlure. That's what Mr. Jarrett wants. Now, he was waiting for that TV timeout, Jim, but he knew he had to get one to get his team back to Utah basketball. McGlure wanting to make a move. Yes, tremendous move for Tubby Smith. To get Jamal McGlure to come up with a big offensive play is a real bonus for Kentucky. Here you see Doliak. Gore tries to fight over the top. He gets caught on the wrong side. Too late. Doliak does the good thing by going for the dunk instead of putting it up on the glass. And here's Jamal. The Canadian goes in. Nice scoop shot. Great step to the basket. McGlory, you can just see his confidence rising in this tournament alone. Well, Jim, remember the left-hand hook that he made against Stanford, a key play for Kentucky. Hashimu Evans for Kentucky. Perhaps the most dangerous sub on either side in this game. Well, certainly the most consistent. And the thing that makes him so good, Jim, coming off the bench, he can play any one of three positions defensively, and he's not afraid to go down inside and rebound with anybody, regardless of size. Three subs back here handling the press for Utah. McCavish now goes long. Let's see how they handle the press with Miller on the bench. Well, they've got a freshman handling it, and that was trouble against West Virginia. Trouble for Utah. Britton Johnson doubled up. Gets it over to Jackson. Johnson, freshman takes the three. Got it. Is he going to be the unknown soldier? He was one of your candidates. Absolutely. The kid doesn't even understand that there's 45,000 out here. Sometimes that happens. He had to sit out the first 11 weeks of college basketball, but he's coming on strong here in the postseason. McTavish with the body. Not in the act of shooting. They'll bring in Medela and Miller. Best rebounding teams in the country. Utah one, Kentucky two. What does it take to get to the championship game when you start practice next October? Show them this graphic, right? Well, and you know what's interesting, Jim? Probably because Kentucky has played and been so proficient offensively, they have a negative rebounding advantage or disadvantage in the tournament, but they haven't gotten many offensive rebounds because they're scoring so much. Jackson got stuck underneath. Last touch by Kentucky. Wildcats come in with Saul Smith, Cameron Mills. Smith, the freshman, son of the head coach. Cameron Mills, former walk-on and senior who was uh, such a factor in last year's tournament. Kentucky, as an example, was out-rebounded by Stanford, 45 to 40, but still won the basketball game. On the line. Back foot on the line for Britton Johnson. Give Evans a lot of credit there. Good, hard-nosed defensive pressure pushed him out. Said hard nose, it looked like Evans has got a little hard nose there. He's got the uh, bandage right over the top of his nose. He's got the, uh, or is that that the strip? Yeah, yeah the well, he's, strip. he's battling allergies down here. Uh -huh. Allergic to pollen. He's been acting up on him in San Antonio. So that's why he's yep. donning the strip. Evans takes the shot over Medellin. Miller comes in, crashing the boards, and Utah runs. Job by Miller to recognize what's behind him. Jensen inside, and McGlure gets the first swat of the game. 43 blocks for Kentucky in the NCAA tournament. Breaking the record of UMass as a team block record in the NCAAs back in 96. Jensen, I mean, there was no one within 10 feet of him. And it'll break down. And Utah has the lead for the first time. curl move Shepard take it time tonight Shepard penetrates Rick Majerus and staff love to look at film so much and I'm sure they had their players aware that he's going to come off that curl and take the jump shot and Shepard really crossing them up here twice early on 
fifth tie in the game's first seven minutes. Utah's a lot like Princeton in terms of philosophy. Half court. They just make you work so hard defensively. Hano Metalov. That possession almost got away from Utah, but it ends up with the medal of basket. Metalov now banging bodies with McGlure inside. Mills wanting to feed it to McGlure. Mills will find out that Jensen's a fine defender. He'll have a hard time hitting anything except the outside wide open jumper, which he gets. Utah boxing out underneath. Up high. Johnson snaps it out. Jackson three. And Medellin oh, crashes the board for the putback. That was some save, though, by Britton Johnson to get that ball back into play. Absolutely, Jim. The presence of mind not only to catch the ball, but to make the feed while in the air. And a turnover. No, it's a solid screen defensive foul on Evans. Trying to free up Shepard. There is Johnson. The catch. The flip out. And watch. Hannah Metal was all the way at the top of the key when this shot went up. Nobody blocked him out. Interesting play. See where Metal is on the pass. Miller throws. Johnson catches the ball as he's spinning, has the presence of mind to feed back to the outside. And here comes Metal, the man that was equal to, to uh, Miller on the pass, down with nobody blocking him out to put it back in to put Utah ahead 17 to 13. That was uh, quite a finish by the man from Helsinki. I know Metal with six points for Utah and the Utes out rebounding Kentucky at the start nine to two one of the Packer points what's new Jim this team fundamentally so beautiful to watch with their rebounding technique the pump fake metal up a little force that time but got it back Muhammad with the block Evans out of bounds Utah ball. Jim, yesterday I watched the Hoop Summit game in which the international, 12 top international juniors played against 12 top American high school seniors. The international kids won. So Medela is not going to be the last of guys you're going to see in the final four coming from international countries. So just terrific basketball action yesterday. And a lot of kids, a kid from Germany by the name of Nowitzki, was sensational. Utah beat him once on the inbound play, but not this time. Evans with the theft. Turner, penetration cut off by Miller. Block the pass. Quick and hand. Turner and Kentucky turn it over. Miller leans in, jumper back to the rim. He has a complete green light from Rick Majerus to take that ball the length of the floor. Miller with 37 minutes the other day in the semifinals at the step. Utah turning it over. Now for the seventh time in the half. Jim, that's surprising because against North Carolina, they only turned the ball over nine times the entire basketball game. This is not what Rick Majerus would want. Trace Caton, number 21, comes in for Utah. His brother Ben was a starter on the Utah team last year that made it to the final eight before being ousted by Kentucky. Muhammad showing his outside shot. Not his shot. I can't believe that Kentucky this quickly has gotten away from pounding the ball down inside to Nazi Muhammad. He and McGlure have both scored on Doliak down and low. Again, big men bringing the ball up the court for Utah. Altering the press. Madela. Some matchup with Padgett and another whistle. That's on Miller. Yep. Miller on a screen away from the ball. His first. Rick Majera screaming to his team, move. He wants that motion offense to really be working, making Kentucky use about 20, 25 seconds of hard-earned energy to defend them. Makes 
the move. That shot over to Oviak. That's where Kentucky is really effective. Getting him down in the low blocks. And here comes Miller again. Uses the body to draw the foul on Muhammad. Miller, who struggled with the line against North Carolina, will shoot two. Muhammad's first foul. Here we see the ball going down inside. Now, that does two things. It forces Doliak to have to really work on defense. It also potentially puts him into some foul trouble. And as I said, Kentucky has two players that split about 35 minutes in the post. Doliak in the tournament has been playing 30 minutes himself. So Kentucky has to make Doliak work, as they did there. Miller continues to misfire at the line, spilling over from Saturday. But in the tournament, what, what a stretch he's enjoyed. 28 points in a game against Arkansas, career high. Utah's first ever triple-double in the drubbing of Arizona. 18 points, 14 rebounds, 13 assists him in that game, and only three turnovers. Probably the best single performance in this tournament. And the first triple-doubles I know of in the tournament since Magic Johnson did it in the Final Four. Padgett got the shot to drop over the freshman. Yeah, he just too strong down inside for Johnson. Padgett showing that versatility. He can hang out beyond the arc or he can post you up. Absolutely. Figures to be one of the stars of college basketball next year. Yep. Already is this year. The young man who in 96 was not part of a national championship team on academic probation. But he's battled back both athletically and academically since then. Goliath. Frees himself with a little move. Six for the center of the Utes. Jim, both teams be well served to keep pumping that ball down inside in the low blocks because neither team doing a very good job defending down there. Hanson gets called for a foul trying to stop Shepard coming off the curl. It's amazing for Kentucky what develops when they go to Nazi Muhammad down low. It opens up everybody else outside. Again, easy feed, easy hoop for Nazi, the big Z. I think Doliak's getting a little tired, Jim. He's being asked to help bring the ball up in the press. So far, Tubby Smith, as he has throughout this tournament, brilliantly using his two postmen. Overfiring the three, Doliak follows it up. See, the Doliak story, though, is he has to withstand not only Muhammad, but Muhammad could go out and they bring McClure to bang it. Absolutely. It's two against one there. So far, Doliak doing a good job, but he's got to get tired. Muhammad again. Tipped by Patchett. Scott Patchett, who did not make the U.S. 22 and under team last summer, coached by Rick Majerus. They had a riff. Well, he's making up for it tonight, but he's taking advantage of the fact that he's so much stronger than Johnson, pushing, pushing him right underneath the basket. Hanson, he can make these. Three-pointer, spins out. Great rebound by Doliak. Draws the foul on Kentucky. Maybe Muhammad. It's on Muhammad, his second. You'll notice inside, shot goes up. But here's where Padgett is just too strong. Johnson has got to put a body on, keep him away. Biggest lead in the game on either side has been four. A huge lead of one. Sure. Jim Nance, Billy Packer from the magnificent Alamo City of San Antonio. Field goal percentages are up for these two defensive powers. Look at the rebounds, though, Billy. That's startling. 15 for Utah, 3 for Kentucky. Well, as I said, uh, it's surprising, and there's a reason because they, they've been so high scoring in this tournament, but Kentucky has not rebounded during the tournament like they did in regular season. Utah continues to be very solid in that area of, the, of basketball. Doliak sits. Billy, you said he looked very fatigued. Oh, he was. He could hardly walk off the floor, but uh, he gives Rick Majerus everything he could ask. Now let's see whether they can withstand it. Metal will have to go down inside and play McGlure. Metal has had a fantastic start for Utah. Six points and seven rebounds. He was an exchange student here at San Antonio Churchill High School. 
back in 1994, but ineligible to play Texas high school ball because he was on the finished junior team. That broke Texas rules. Jim, so. the first time I ever saw him play was against both Wake Forest and Arizona. He didn't have a lot of stats in either one of those games, but he put the ball on the floor, and I said, this kid is really going to be special. And he's showing that he is. Showing his stuff here, and blocked by McGlure and a whistle. McGlure can't believe it. That was a good break for Utah because... Padgett did a fine job coming over, allowing McGlure to be in a position to block this shot. Now watch Padgett come over to help out. Reverse move. Padgett comes over from the weak side, and that puts McGlure in perfect position to block the shot. Doesn't quite get it. Metal up to shoot two. He signed with the Utes after both Rick Majerus and Jeff Judkins, his assistant, came to Finland to try to talk him into playing for Utah. So that was quite a commitment. He had visited... Cal Berkeley also in Carolina had offered a visit, which he never took. Metala gives Utah the three-point lead. Kentucky has not made a three in this game, and that's something Utah took away from Carolina on Saturday. They've taken it away from everybody, holding people down and 25% from three in this tournament. They're not giving you many good looks. Yeah, Kentucky's 0 for 3 from behind the arc. Shepard up and over metal up, but comes up short. Hand straight up. I thought he fouled Shepard on the play. No call. You can always tell if guys are really concentrating on the game. They don't gripe at officials' lack of calls. They just go play basketball. One of the things that really hurt North Carolina on Saturday. Johnson lost control of it. Turner driving all the way. Wayne Turner. Jim, we've got two point guards that can really finish. We saw Turner do that constantly against Duke University. He can take that ball the length of the court, as can Miller. These are important minutes for Utah with Doliak out of the game. A five-second call and a smart play by Jeff Shepard. Instead of having aggressive defense, he just hung around with him. Here's Turner on the drive. I'll tell you, if Andre Miller's not careful, he'll get another triple-double here tonight, but th the third stat will be turnovers. He's got well, five here in the first half. See, normally, you think that defender has to aggressively be guarding you, but all he has to do is be within six feet in the guarding position, and that's what happened on the play. Switch off. Boy, good, good hedge moving on defense by Utah. Three. As good a look as Kentucky could ask for. Ahead, Miller. Jensen at the other end. And Utah's in front by three. Jim, Andre, Andre Miller is averaging 7.8 rebounds a game in the NCAA tournament play. We're talking about a point guard averaging almost eight rebounds a game. That's sensation. Three rebounds tonight. That average certainly bolstered by the 14-rebound effort against Arizona. Doliak comes back. He got a nice break. Well, you know, he had 14 rebounds against North Carolina. That's not bad either. As it's out, Michael Bradley's in, a freshman for Kentucky. Shepard picks up the loose ball. Doliak with the rest and the block out gets it. Good smart play by Evans. Don't you got to cut Miller off. The center will take the three, top of the key. Doliak delivers. And Utah has its biggest lead of the championship game. Give Rick Majerus credit. He knew Doliak was exhausted. Gives him the rest. He has enough to be able to come out there and hit the three, which he does very well for a big man. Evans lost control of it, and Utah might have some numbers. Well, Jensen will slow it down. Jackson had broken ahead. Miller got the lane. Too strong. Doliak had a good open putback. But misfired. Shepard, Miller forced the steal. Jackson breaks ahead. Joliak the trailer. Oh, against the great shot blocker, Miller goes under McGlure. He is fearless on the break. A Utah run, and the Utes lead by eight. Shepard, wide. Ahead again, it's Jensen. Jim, you have to ask why. Kentucky's game against Utah is to go down inside and make Doliak work, work, work defensively. They're not doing that. 
They're, they're playing kind of like North Carolina did in a frenzy. Really out of sync is Kentucky. Beautiful hit ahead pass. Young man who was on a mission for two years comes back, played as a freshman, put that one in without trouble. David Jackson with the assist. Here he is, Alex Jensen. Rick Pacheris believes, had he been here either one of the last two years while he was away on his mission to England, he thinks they would have been in the Final Four with him. Now, Jim, remember the fact that Kentucky has knocked out Utah the last three times they played. 93 in a route, 96 in a route, 71-01, 97 in a semi-route, 59-72. So, but the Utah kids say, hey, they aren't the same players that we played against in those previous years. Johnson in for Jensen. That's a deceiving score last year. It was a play game with four minutes to go. Then Miller hurt his hand and did not return. Hook shot McGlure. The season is just ending too fast for McGlure. He is absolutely in stride here in the tournament. Miller again, wise decision on his part when he saw McGlure there at the end. Ah! On the baseline, a piece of the arm. That'll send Miller to the line. The two best rebounding teams in the country, and this is astonishing. Astonishing, Jim, and I'll tell you why. If you're playing against Utah, you want much better shot selection. They block out so well. Kentucky has taken shots before their team was in position to rebound. When you take a bad shot, your own teammates don't think it's going up, so they don't get in position. Really playing into Utah's hands. That foul was on McGlure, his second. So McGlure and Muhammad with two each. Padgett comes in for McGlure. All WAC player, all defensive player in the WAC, the MVP of the West region. Miller just uh, one honor after another. Got both. A double-digit lead for Utah. It's time for Kentucky to think inside, but when I say that, I look out on the floor, and neither Nazi Muhammad or McGlure in there, it's Bradley, so they almost have to go outside. Funny lineup in the game at this time for Kentucky. 3.47 to go without any of their two key postmen in the game. Hatchet. Soft hook. And that's the second time Padgett has scored down on the block, with the blocks. I'm almost surprised that Doliak doesn't take Padgett. Johnson, three. A little quick for Utah's liking. Allen Edwards, beautiful drive to the hoop. Edwards has had a tremendous NCAA tournament. Two brothers that played in the NCAA who never got to a Final Four. Three minutes to go in the first half. Goliak in the lane. And Bradley pushed off. And there again we see posting up down in the paint three to five feet away. And here's that slashing drive. Great play by Edwards. Kentucky probably will play without having Bradley in the low post now and try to get the slashing plays of Edwards and maybe even sleep and slide Padgett down in the low post. Two for Doliak. Doliak was born right here in San Antonio. His Jim father an orthodontist in the military, and he was uh, schooled here in San Antonio also. Doliak was asked yesterday, what's it like playing for a coach like Rick Majerus, who's always firing off all those funny one-liners? What's it like in practice? He says, oh, we get a lot of the one-liners in practice, but they're not funny. <laughs> He's shooting 85% from the line in the NCAA tournament, 80, over 80% 80 from the line during the course of the season, so a very good free throw shooter. A lot of subs in for Utah. Jordy McTavish has come back, number 11. You get the feeling that Tubby Smith may want to walk, try to wear this team down right before the half because he doesn't have a normal lineup out there right now. Padgett, he's got Nettola on his back this time. Cameron Mills fouled on the drive. And this helps Kentucky. Mills 20 for 21 on the year from the foul line. Kind of guy you want to get on that line. 
Coming up on Pennzoil at the half, Greg Clark and Coach Smith will have the first half analysis, and we'll be joined by Senator Bill Bradley with his perspective on the tournament. That's all coming up on Pennzoil at the half. Cameron Mills, he was offered a scholarship out of Dunbar High School in Lexington to go to Georgia, but his dream was to go to Kentucky, where his father had played for Adolph Rupp from 69 through 71. And Rick Patino told him, we can't offer you a scholarship. He says, Coach, if I'm good enough to make the team one day, maybe I'll be good enough to earn a scholarship. And he has. And he not only won a scholarship, but he took Kentucky really to the Final Four last year. He's a leading scorer going in to the Final Four with sensation in the SEC tournament. Has been kind of quiet here in this year's NCAA run. Doliak with 12 points leading Utah, and the Utes lead is six. David Caruso, Michael Hayes is here to watch the championship game. Kentucky's third straight championship appearance. Utah's first final since 1944. A Utah team that had actually entered the NIT lost in the first round to Kentucky. And on the way home, they had to sub at the last minute for an Arkansas squad that had been in an accident. And Utah went on to win that national championship in 44. They returned to this stage for the first time tonight. And another turnover by Miller. Half-court zone trap. Big turnover by Kentucky. They had advantage. Good half-court zone trap. Utah had Doliak underneath. Johnson. Oh, great play by the freshman. What a half he's had. Five points for Britton Johnson. Jim, he didn't. He almost saw the pass to Doliak, and then Evans did a great job. A very smart defensive play took that pass away. I think this is a big advantage right here for Utah to have Bradley in the game in these closing minutes because they aren't able to occupy Doliak on the defensive end of the court with Bradley in the game as opposed to having Nazi Muhammad or McGlure in there. Kentucky now 0 for 6 from 3. Kentucky playing his zone right now. This kind of helps Utah as well because it slows down the basketball game for him. Tipped off. Good job by Cameron Mills. Tip off Johnson's hand. You know, you showed that, that tournament summary, Jim. Nine of the last 11 winners of the NCAA championship have played at least 11 games against the field. Kind of surprising. This year, Kentucky came in 11-2. Utah just 3-2. and two. Very sparse uh, amount of competition. It really is. Against tournament team. That's a 20 charge to Utah. Let's check the Microsoft data bank. And Utah won the championship in the fifth year. Oregon and Wisconsin, Stanford, and Wyoming, then Utah, 1944. The tall furs of Oregon, the first champion ever of the NCAA. And Arnie Farron, who we have seen around town, was the most outstanding player in that championship run, scored 22 points in the championship game. He looks young enough today to still be playing out there. I know he's very proud of this Utah team. Three-time All-American from Utah. Has it. Hook shot. Too strong. Miller. And last touch by Edwards. Well, I really don't like the lineup that Kentucky has on the floor to go down a stretch. They're trying to do it with defense, but they sure aren't going to occupy Doliak very much. By, not, last, by not having a postman. They're Under trying, a minute. They're trying to get it with a defensive pressure right here. See, and being in a zone, that allows Utah to play a pace game. Hanson got Evans to commit. Stepped over. That's a two. Beautiful fake. Ten point lead. Defensive play by Hanson, beating the shooter right to the spot. Two-second differential on the clock. Switching out front. Edwards found the lane. Somehow it bounces out. And there's that freshman Johnson again with a rebound. Six seconds and a half. Miller looking for help. Hanson with a second to go on the run. And we come to the half. 
with Utah in front by 10. Uh, Jim, no team has ever come back for more than eight points to win a championship game. Loyola Chicago, the only one ever to do it. 1963, the biggest halftime deficit ever overturned. But they have been the comeback cats. Can Kentucky do it again? Let's go over to our colleague, Armin Katayan. Rick, you're pounding them on the boards. Can you prevail playing this kind of game, including the turnover? Well, our post defense is not good. We've got to do a better job on post D, and we've got to do a little bit better job on, on helping out on the curl. We've got to bump that curl a little bit better. But I like our enthusiasm. I like our, our presence on the fast break. We're playing with confidence, and we're looking to attack. We must continue to do that. I think we're making good decisions. Our ball rotation is excellent. Thanks, Rick. Jim? For at least a half, there is a Cinderella in San Antonio. Will it hold up? Utah 41, Kentucky 31, and CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station.